The Squirrel Story Once upon a time, I was living with a boyfriend, my cat, and his dog. Looking through my closet one winter night, I saw a puffy tail go by. Didn't think anything about it until I looked down at the ground and saw my cat staring up at me. But if it wasn't her puffy tail, whose tail was it? I slowly reached out to move some hangers, but didn't even touch a shirt sleeve before a squirrel leapt out of the closet and over my shoulder. I screamed because that's what you do when a squirrel leaps at your face. <laughs> my boyfriend came running and I told him about the intruder. He immediately closed the bedroom door, locking the squirrel inside. With me and the cat, who was fascinated but worthless. As the squirrel did laps around the bedroom, the door opened just long enough for my boyfriend to throw in a butterfly net and let me know he'd be waiting across the hall to open the deck doors when I was ready. It took a few tries, but I managed to snare the wily beast and throw it and the butterfly net out onto the deck. It didn't take us long to realize the squirrel was trapped, so I put on a pair of leather winter gloves, went outside, and with a little bit of effort, set it free. It went off to live a happy, squirrely life. <sighs> what a beautiful end of the story that would be. But I came in the door a few weeks later to find the dog running around free. Dog didn't normally run around free, but she was well trained, so I wasn't worried about the state of the house. Until I came around the corner and saw a squirrel sitting on the kitchen counter. We stared each other down for a few moments, but the first twitch of movement sent the squirrel darting past me and into the living room. The dog, who had been bred and trained for hunting, was as fascinated and worthless as the cat had been. So I went and grabbed the butterfly net, scooped it up, and tossed it outside, hoping that it would land with a chance to give itself an escape. It did not. So once again, I put on my leather gloves and went outside. This squirrel was slightly less interested in my help and bit me at the base of my index finger, right through the leather gloves. Ho oh, ho, when people ask me what it felt like, I tell them to imagine taking a staple remover and chomping down as hard as you possibly can. I screamed because that's what you do when you get bitten that hard. A primal frenzy followed. I grabbed the squirrel with my free hand and pounded it against the deck as hard as I could until I managed to rip it free and hurl it unceremoniously into the snowdrifts in the yard. It ran away to live a happy, squirrely life. I went to the emergency room. The desk nurse asked me what happened and I told her the story while she gathered my paperwork to fill out. The nurse who took me back to the room also asked me what happened, so I told her the story while she took my vital statistics. While I was waiting for the doctor to arrive, a third nurse came in the room. She said she was there to check supplies and, I don't know, pretended to count cotton balls while she nonchalantly asked me what happened. Kind of felt like she might already know what happened, but I told her the story nonetheless. By the time the doctor arrived, there seemed like no chance that he hadn't heard the story from at least one of the nurses, but he just managed a straight face when he asked me what happened, so I obliged him as well. He didn't think I'd have to worry about rabies since he called it a provoked attack. You see, by trying to set the squirrel free, I provoked it to attack me. I'm a jerk like that. For about a year, I couldn't feel anything from the point of the bite up to the knuckle. My mom told me that if that's the worst thing that happens, it's not so bad. And she's right. I mean, really, anything you can walk away from with a good story to tell isn't such a bad thing. Thanks for listening.